Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is JD. I work with MTS. I am an educational media technician, and uh, I'm here to actually kind of go through the remote learning tools recording audio uh, class. And basically, uh, this is going to go through uh, how to use this on your iOS or Mac uh, driven device. And one of the things that I would kind of strongly suggest is if you don't have a really good microphone, there's a couple helpful hints. I'm going to give everybody kind of a copy of this sort of cheat sheet that I've developed uh, that will explain um, how to hold your microphone and making sure it actually is uh, not too close to your face. One of the things that I recommend is if you have a cell phone or if you're using um, something that's like a, um, uh, a cell phone or a um, another device or a microphone, keep it about three to six inches from your face. And this is only because um, when you're doing that, uh, the sound itself, and I'll kind of demonstrate here, so just bear with me for just a moment. I turn on my camera here so you can kind of see me. So if I'm recording into this and I'm using this device to kind of record to, I don't want to re record directly into it and put my face too close to it. I want to keep it about three to six inches from my face. So normally what I'll do is I'll take the uh, phone or microphone and kind of angle it in such a way, especially if I don't have a spit guard or a wind guard to kind of protect from any uh, audio hits being um, placed on the microphone. That way your P's and your Q's and words that you say with those S's and things like that aren't going to be um, an over reverberation onto the speaker itself. So um, another tip that I'll give you is if you're recording a, a memo or something on this or any kind of device, is make sure that you are in a space that allows you to uh, record in. So for example, I will be in an enclosed space when I record a voiceover, like a closet, I know it sounds weird, a bathroom, any space that has good acoustics and that's kind of quiet. Uh, you also wanna make sure that there's no distractions or other things in the background that could impede your sound going into the device. So that's one tip. Uh, the other tip that I would strongly recommend is that if you can get a headset um, on the cheat sheet that I had that was posted up here. Um, if you don't have a headset or microphones, what uh, we're recommending everybody do is contact the ITS service desk and you can contact them with, through their number at 6395 or by simply sending them an email and explaining to them that you do need that. Uh, what they'll do is uh, put into uh, communication with um, either Harrison or the help desk itself uh, into getting you a headset that has a microphone to use. So that is that option as well. Uh, so if you have any other issues with that, you wanna contact them. Uh, simply that way we can kind of take any kind of requests that come in of uh, people that need help or people that need kind of further instruction and kind of put those together in groups so that way we can kind of teach you all together and help help you out. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to presentation mode. Just give me one moment here. So now you, what you should be seeing is this screen here that is kind of the cheat sheet. Once again, I said I would go ahead and send this out to you. Uh, one of the big things that I'll do is when I'm um, teaching sound or how to actually utilize sound is I'll explain to people that one, to do this the easiest way possible on a Mac driven or iOS device, create a folder on your desktop. Uh, this folder will help you house not only uh, things that you're going to be using or utilizing, but also help you to um, uh, not only keep your audio kind of clear. And I'll usually keep like a, a subfolder inside that folder that has not only my originals, but also my new versions of things. And I'll explain what those are here in just a moment. So um, uh, is everybody clear on that? So, right. And there, there's a question here. I just want to see. You could talk bigger. Yeah, sorry about that. So on here, I'll here's my originals folder, my new versions folder. And all this, where this lives at, you can arrange it so it lives on your hard drive, uh, in your apps folder, um, in your documents, wherever you want this to be housed at. But for simple and easy access, I usually will recommend that people put it um, into their desktop because it's a lot easier just to drag it from your desktop and put it into uh, Google Drive from there. Uh, so that is that aspect of that. The next thing I'll, I'll recommend that you wanna do is check your sound settings. How you do that is you'll see this sound preferences or system preferences bar. If you don't have that, 
uh, docked at the very bottom of your screen here. The other thing you can go to to access that is go to Finder. Yeah, let me access this. And in your Finder, what you'll see is a variety of favorites that I've kind of had bookmarked here. Um, and normally where you'll be able to find the system preferences is in your applications folder. So if you click on that, uh, what you'll normally see is in your applications folder, as soon as you open up that, another um, window opens up. This allows you to go into your system preferences. You can do that here as well. So those are two options for you. You can either go to your dock here, where I have it docked, or your system preferences. So I'm going to just go through the um, original way that I kind of use this without having to uh, use the dock. So if I go into system preferences, I click on it. Another sub menu will open up. Wait, get out of this for just a moment. Another sub menu will open up that looks like this. On this sub menu, what you'll notice is uh, there's a variety of settings here that you can utilize. The one we're most concerned with is our sound. So that can be found right here. I'm going to click on just the speaker itself on sound. And what you'll notice is at the top is there's a tab that has your sound effects, output, input, um, and a variety of sound settings here underneath where it says name and type. And we'll go through what those mean here in just a moment. Um, first off, sound effects is just for you to actually be able to play sound effects through this. We're not really going to be concerned with this tab. I'm just explaining to you what that is. Output is where your output of sound is going to go to. That means if you want your output to go to your internal speakers or if you want them to go to uh, or through your Jabra uh, or your headset, your microphone headset. Uh, normally what I'll um, tell people to do is if you're really unsure of how to utilize this and you're having some issues, utilize your internal speakers um, uh, first. Um, and that will be for both your output and your input. And I'll explain to you how that works here in just a moment. Uh, simply because uh, your internal speakers are the speakers that are on your desktop, or excuse me, on your laptop, desktop, uh, or the device itself. Uh, and sometimes those can be better microphones than what you've currently got. So that is just an option for you to use. So on mine, for me, I'm just putting this on my jobber for now. Uh, I'm going to actually set it to this so that way we can hear some of the audio that I'm going to be doing here in just a moment. So I'm going to set this to my internal speakers. Then on input, input is your microphone or the input volume or for lack of a better term, gain of the sound and audio that is coming into the microphone itself. And how you control that and kind of mitigate that is by taking your input volume and moving this slider up and down. Um, way down, you're not going to be able to hear me because that's my microphone. If I move this all the way up, like so, it's going to then kind of change my audio back and forth. Uh, a good way of setting this and kind of trying this out is to maybe get a uh, another faculty member or someone to kind of um, uh, come into the Google Meet itself or the memo itself uh, and see if they can actually hear you. How they can do that is they can you know use headphones or if you're us utilizing just this feature for Google Meets, um, that's how you would mitigate that or change that. If you're not and you're just doing the basic voice memo, uh, you need to test this out yourself. So that means that when you go into the recording process here, you want to make sure that your input volume is turned all the way up. Uh, your output volume, I usually keep in a mid setting, and that's middle of the road right there. Uh, I don't, don't normally turn this up all the way simply because you can get some audio um, hits where uh, it sounds staticky or it sounds like it's over reverberating or it sounds too loud. So I'll keep this right in the middle. Uh, uh, any other questions with that since it's just us? Keep in mind we're recording this, so if you need to play this back, if you have other questions, you can play this back at your leisure. Uh, Joseph, did you want to chime in with anything? I can go ahead and mute myself or, okay, you're good? Okay. So that's input, that's output. Um, and what I'm going to do next is since I've got that set, I now want to go into another feature on this. And how I'm going to access the memos feature is this. I'm going to minimize this window. And in my dock at the bottom, I actually have video memos selected.
But the other way that I can actually go ahead and get that application and access it is by going back into my applications folder. So I'm going to close this window so you can kind of see that process from the beginning. To find my applications folder, I can simply go to my finder, click on that, select your applications folder, just like I had done. And I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger so everybody can see it. In my applications folder, what I'm looking for is what is called voice memos. Voice memos is Mac's own device that allows you to record your audio. Uh, it also allows you to do some a minor editing uh, and it's not perfect, but it is actually pretty good. So I'm going to click on that. And this is going to open another menu here. So I'm going to close out of this one. Just bear with me for a moment while I move this over. And now you're going to see an application. This is what voice memos looks like. I know it doesn't look like anything right now, but that's because uh, we don't have this, this kind of setup for us to record just yet. So in order for me to record something, as you can kind of see in this um, window here, these are all um, back recordings or previous recordings that I had done. Uh, there's a couple tests here. When you click on old audio recordings, what you'll notice is a waveform pops up. This waveform also has a time code here underneath and then an editing time code, or excuse me, um, an editing um, playhead with time code underneath. And I'll explain what all those kind of options are and how you use them in just a second. So normally what I'll do is if I'm recording something brand new, I'll click this button. So now I wanna start over a little bit from the beginning here. So let me back up for just a second. And when you hit record, what happens is this. Uh, so let me back up just a second out of this. When you hit record, it goes into a editing timeline. Uh, this is your timeline with time code underneath. And this is a playhead with time code and timeline underneath. When you hit this button or the record button, so let me go back again. When I hit this record button, this automatically starts to record uh, immediately. So how do you go about editing that? Well, what's kind of interesting is this has two windows. This window that you're seeing right now, that uh, is just your accessibility window if you wanted to play like an old clip like what I just recorded, or uh, another access window that allows you to edit. And I'll explain how those two work in just a moment. So as soon as I wide this up a little bit, I hit record. As you can see, my audio is being recorded right now. Um, how you can access your audio and kind of edit this is, allow me to kind of play this back here for just a moment. The waveform here are basically my audio tracks being recorded. One of the things you want to kind of watch for when into this is that you don't want your waveform to kind of rise up above a mid-level. How you kind of deem that is simply because, or simply you look at the level of the waveform itself. And if it goes kind of up above here, that's where you want to kind of watch out because that means your audio will start to clip. So how do you adjust that? Uh, simply, you can go back into your audio settings and change that by doing this and adjusting that down. That's your microphone. Uh, or um, if you are using something like you're playing some video or you're playing some video and you're kind of using your voiceover at the same time with the video, you would adjust that down with your output volume here. So your input volume, that remember that controls your microphone here. So if this is too loud and it sounds too loud, you can leave this open while you are recording this. And that's normally what I'll do. So that way I can kind of do both at the same time. Uh, so what you're noticing here is you're seeing the playhead of what I've just recorded, excuse me, the time code and the uh, window of what I've just recorded with waveform here. And then underneath here is uh, my time code, my editing, uh, playhead that I can move back and forth. This editing um, playhead allows us to not only insert audio or overlap audio, but also edit it, it out. And it's pretty easy to use. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this playhead and move it to a spot that I want to record over. So if you can't hear that, let me turn that up a little bit. As you can see, my audio is being recorded right now. 
So that's what I just recorded. What I want to do is maybe I want to overdub this spot. So how do I do that? Is it's really simple. Is I take my cursor and the playhead. I take the playhead just like where I want to start the edit at, and I can hit replace. And what that does is that overdubs the audio just in this this piece right here. So if I want to just start with one, two, three, four. It will now overdub the audio that was already in this um, time code, excuse me, already in this uh, playhead and window itself. One, two, three, four. So if you notice, it's now being replaced. The other way that I can actually do some editing, and when I am done replacing this or these individual chunks, is I can hit done. And now what that'll do is it'll save a new version. Your newest version will be saved here uh, with that audio change. And that's the first way that you can do editing. Another way that you can do editing is if I'm recording just like so and I stop, another way that I can do this is I can use this editing feature at the top. And I'm going to kind of um, enlarge this so you can kind of see this a little bit better. There's an ed editor right here that's called uh, trim and edit. What that allows us to do is trim the audio waveform or trim it down. So let me record a little bit first and I'll explain to you how this works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's my audio I just recorded. And now what I want to do is I want to edit this audio so that way I can trim out maybe this blank space here or this blank space at the end. One way you can do it is by clicking on this edit tab that's at the very top that you can see right here. And what you're going to notice is, is on your timeline at the bottom here uh, with your playhead, you will see a yellow bar or yellow rectangle that highlights the area that you want to edit. Now, when you trim, which is what this is called. So let me back up a second. I want to just make this a little bit smaller so you can see this. So when I click on this, what you'll notice is if I move this bar, you'll see two buttons at the bottom highlight. Those two buttons will allow me to do two things, trim and delete the audio itself. I'll explain how each work. If I want to trim my audio, I can simply move this bar to the area that I want to trim or think of it this way, the area that I want to keep. So for example, if I click trim here and I hit trim, that takes out the audio that was at the end over here and keeps this. So think of this as two endpoints. This is my in and my out endpoint, and it allows me to edit that. Now, one feature that um, I try to tell people to utilize is Command Z. Command Z is your best friend. You want to know why? Because if you hit Command Z, watch what happens to my timeline. It restores the previous edit that I just took out. Uh, so now, trim, all that does is keep what is ever inside the yellow rectangle, and it deletes the other piece that's on here. And you can move this you know, wherever you need to. So for example, if I hit Command Z, and I need to move this down so it just takes out this back part, I could do that. And then once you hit trim, you take that out. If you notice, it's just keeping the part that is highlighted. That is trim. Uh, to delete it or delete a section out of this, delete works the opposite way. Delete will delete whatever is inside this window. So trim keeps it inside here. Delete, so say for example, if I want to delete just this part here, we'll delete whatever is in that, in that window itself. So let's watch. Boom. See, now it's gone. I can restore it by hitting Command Z. And that'll also restore back what I've just edited. Now, once you've done your edits, uh, keep in mind, I've showed you how to do a replace, to do a trim, and also to delete. So now, if we're done with our edits, so say, for example, I just want to edit out this part here. I'm done. I love what I've done. I want to go ahead and share what I've done or play it out. It's always a good idea to play it out to make sure that this sounds the right way to you. So how you do that is just by playing. Hit your play button. Just like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that'll play what you've just kind of covered or what you've just kind of edited. 
Uh, if I want to just play 15 seconds earlier, it will jump back 15 seconds into the clip or go to the end of the clip since this is only about six seconds. So uh, that's what these two do. They allow us to kind of, I don't want to say rewind, but allow us to go back 15 seconds or jump forward 15 seconds. So now when I'm, when I'm done with my audio and I've got it kind of edited to where I want to, I can save it. How do I save that? I can click save, then done. And my audio is then living right here. It's only a six second clip. So what I can do with this clip, kind of show you it, it lives right here and it saves it. And what I can do with this clip is now I want to take this and put it into Google Drive or share it with somebody. And there's a variety of ways you can do this. You can right click on it and go to share, mail, messages, airdrop, notes, more. Uh, there's other ways that you can kind of send this out if you want to. The way that I mostly will recommend people do this is just so you get into the habit of having a backup. I like having backups of backups. So what I'll normally do is I'll end up taking the clip itself. I can either take the clip and drag it out of the window that it lives on and drag it to my desktop. Or I'll drag it to my audio editing folder here. I'll put it like in my originals file. And that's where that will live. Um, if I want to change the name on it, I can simply highlight it or click on it. Right click if you have a mouse or control click or command click. And I can change this to version uh, one. And um, I get in the habit of naming things and I'll keep them in two different folders. One is an original and one is a new versions. So that way I know what what I just got done doing. You might even want to put in other information like your dates, the name of whatever course that you're working on or what lecture it is that you're recording. Um, you can change all that in here. Okay. So now that we've got that kind of set up, the next thing I want to do is say, I'm done with the editing process itself. Uh, but actually, let me jump back for just a moment. Um, another way that you can share this is by clicking on this tab at the top. And I'll explain where that's at. I don't normally use that because I like to keep things simple, but just so you know where that's at, you can use that as an option as well. I'm going to escape out of my memos here. I'm just going to minimize this so we can come back to that if we have any discussion questions. And next thing I want to do is take my audio that I've just recorded, this one, and I want to take that and put that into my Google Drive. Well, it's pretty simple. If I want to take this audio clip, move this into Google Drive or Google Chrome, I click on Google Chrome just like so. Now, mine's going to open up a window over here, so I've got to bring it over to you so you can kind of see it. In Google Chrome, you'll see this uh, kind of feature setup. I go here. I go to Drive. And I've made kind of a subfolder already in here. How you can do that to kind of house the, the Drive or the um, uh, audio clips that you have is just click on New, Folder, and I put in Audio. Great. You'll see it kind of come up as one of your very first folders that you have here. I double click on that. The next thing I'm going to do is now I want to go back to my folder that has my audio. I can either use this window that I have open. I'm going to close it so I can actually go back to the audio folder itself. I can go to the audio folder itself, go to my originals, and then I can click on version one, which is what I just got done recording, and drop that into here. From there, if I want to share this audio folder to my class, I can click on or right click or control click or command click, depending upon what you have uh, on the uh, shared folder, excuse me, the audio folder, or excuse me, audio clip itself. I can click share and assign that to be shared to a person. Uh, so if I want to put in you know, their email, et cetera, usually should pop up. Uh, so in a pinch if you need to kind of use this to kind of do your classes. Um, that's the fastest way that I know about going about doing this. It's also the easiest way.